All right, welcome everyone to the state of the game for July 20th. As you can see, I am still alone, but actually I am not. I have two very invisible guests with me right now. One is in my head, or at least in my ear, and we are going to get to him very soon. The other one, you might have he heard him before uh, when we were still doing the countdown, uh, is with us. He's actually handling all the technical stuff, so you unfortunately will not see him on the screen. But he's with us at heart, uh, which is Hamish. So I I'm a ghost. <laughs> you're a ghost, no, exactly. Yeah, no. you don't, you don't, you don't exist. Technically, you're not supposed to be here. Uh, you're still on holiday, so just just pretend you're not here. Chat, please pretend Hamish is not here, okay? But yep. he is here with us, uh, which is great. The other guest that we have, and we're going to actually bring him on screen, hopefully, uh, is Keith from Redstorm. So, chat, say hi to Keith. Keith, hello. Hi. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to hey. you now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I can't uh, hear I, anything. You can't, you can't hear me. All right. So uh, I can now. All right. All we're right. Live. It's good. That's perfect. Here we That's go. technical stuff. Yep. I think we're good. So, uh, Keith, what about you just briefly introduce yourself for those who don't know you? Sure. Uh, I'm Keith Evans. I'm the lead designer here at Redstorm uh, on the division. Yeah, so Keith has been uh, very much involved in a lot of things regarding update 1.7 and all the things that you guys have been testing on the PTS. So we're going to be talking a bit about uh, some of these things today. Uh, and we'll start right away. Um, so talking about PTS, as you know, PTS 3 has been released on PC this week. It started on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday this week, so that was two days ago. Uh, the good news is that PTS 3 is also coming to console, so that's the great news. You know, we explained that when we do a PTS on console, it can be a bit hard to get through all the, you know, uh, the submission process, try to get the builds approved and uh, uploaded and put on the, on the different platforms. So we are currently going through the submission process for the PTS 3 build that is already on PC, and the good news is that it's looking very good. We should be able to deploy it on Tuesday next week on console. So that will be the same build that what the PC players have right now. So if you're curious, you can already go on the forums and check the patch notes. There's a bunch of changes, and we'll be talking about some of them with Keith. Uh, but one thing that is very important to note is that uh, it's going to be a special PTS free version, if I can say, on console, because there's going to be one change that we're going to put on this build on console that is not available on the PC version because we made it after we deployed it on PC and we think it's very important for console players. Uh, it has to do with the SASG. So Keith, do you want to talk about that? Sure, yeah. I mean, basically, um, we saw that rise pretty quickly. We've become pretty dominant um, in the, the tactic that people are using of kind of shouldering the weapon. Um, so we've gone in and um, looked at a bunch of different things that we could tweak to improve that experience. Um, but kind of the, we decided on a targeted approach where we're just tuning the actual weapon uh, because there were some things that were out of, uh, out of balance with some of the other high RPM shotguns like the Super 90, for example. Yep. So it's, it's similar in some ways to what we've, we've done to the SVD, just kind of bringing it in line with the rest of the game and making it, um, you know, more, more balanced. So the major change is that as you shoulder, the initial spread uh, is goes a little bit wider and matches closer to what the Super 90 does. So, you know, shouldering and firing, and um, that's still part of the game, but it's harder to land every single pellet because the initial uh, spread of what's live right now is is really tight. Yeah. Yep. So that's. Uh, We've also sorry. One other thing is yeah. we also went in and have been tweaking. This is already on the PTS, but it was something we changed along with this made it so you can no longer, uh, through any kind of cheesy tactics, get above the RPM of the weapon. So yeah. that was another thing people were kind of chaining together with this. Yeah. So yeah, the combination of these two changes, because yeah, the, the RPM one is already on PC, it's not on console because it goes with PTS3, so that will go on Tuesday. Uh, but the combination of that change, so the hard cap on RPM plus the, the changes to SASG, should hopefully make the situation a bit better for you know yes. the, the console the yeah the the shotgun situation and the SSG situation on console. So we're hoping this is going to help. We'll see how that turns out on the PTS. Uh, but yeah, that's again that's a change and that's very important to understand. That's a change that will only be implemented on the console PTS version. But when the update goes live, it will be for everyone. Of course, it's just for the PTS right now. We put the change after we deployed the build on PC, so it's just going to be put on console for the moment. 
So right. please, guys, try it. Tell us how it feels. Tell us, you know, how that works, if that works, and uh, then we'll have a look at it. And that guy here I, in my screen is going to, you know, be interested. I've been watching streams, so I'm pretty sure they're going to try it. So <laughs> yeah. We'll find out pretty fast. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it for PTS3. So again, the plan uh, deployed, uh, we are looking at deploying that on Tuesday next week uh, on console. Uh, no change on PC. PC is going to keep running with the version that is right now. So we're just basically bringing console on par with what is available on the PC version. Uh, now talking about PTS on console. One of the big discussions that we've had since we you know, started talking about it is the invite process. Uh, so you know, before we start uh, with, all, with all the drama and all the issues, yes, we agree, the invite process of the PTS on console was kind of a mess. Definitely agreed, acknowledged. And uh, if we do a PTS on console again for update 1.8 or whatever, we'll definitely have a look at that and try to do it better because trust me, we are you know, equally as unsatisfied as you guys are with how things went. Um, but yeah, we've been looking at it. And basically, one of the things that happened with, you know, all the players uh, saying that they have a lot of uh, playtime on the game, but were not invited. Uh, so there's two extra criteria that are actually to take into account. And that one falls on me. It's my fault. I did not mention those when I explained the criteria because they're very standard. And so I didn't think to mention them, but that could be an explanation. The first one is that you actually have to be 18. Uh, and that might sound stupid, but there may be some cases of players that have not received an invite because they were not 18. And the second one is that you actually have to be opted in to receive emails from uh, Ubisoft, which means that if you created, when you created your Uplay account, uh, when you, you know, started playing the game or whatever, if you untick the thing that says, I allow Ubisoft to send me, uh, you know, promotion emails or whatever, we are legally not allowed to send you any emails, even if that is a console PTS invite or whatever. So that's probably the case for some of you guys. You probably have a lot of hours. You probably would qualify for the PTS. But the fact that this has been unticked means that we are not allowed to select you and to invite you. Uh, that is just that is just a situation. And now it's now it's too late. Now you can I mean you can go there and tick it again for poten potential future phases. Then uh, you would be eligible. But it's going to be it's going to be too late now for the PTS on console. As I said, uh, that's that's something we learn in the process, so we'll do it better next time. But that's one of the cases. However, uh, there are also a lot of cases because you know we have a lot of people that were eligible uh, and were just not invited. Um, so if you think that you should have been invited, if you think that you had this opted in option that was ticked, in, uh, ticked and that you had a lot of play time and still didn't get an invite please do contact our support teams. Our support teams are able to double check with the list of all the players that are eligible that we have. They are able to double check if you're part of this list. And if you are, they are able to send you a key. So please contact our support teams. And if they find out that you actually should be eligible, they will uh, send you a key for the, for the PTS. All right? Uh, and yeah, and that's what I had on the invites. So as I said, again, recap, yes, the invite process is a mess. It's complicated. There's two extra steps that we, that we actually put in there that were not mentioned. You have to be 18 and you have to be opted in to uh, receive emails from your Ubisoft. And that might be a reason why you did not receive your invite. If you think you should have received an invite, uh, please, you know, despite these criteria, uh, please contact our support teams and they should be able to help. Um, all right, I see chat is still talking about SSG, so that's, <laughs> that's OK. Um, <laughs> all right, so other things regarding the PTS. Uh, so, and here I'm, uh, I'm, I'm calling on Keith uh, to comment on that. But yeah, the, so obviously classified has been a big discussion, uh, you know, the classified items, because this is one of the cool things that people are looking for with the global events. And one of the big feedback that we had since the beginning of the PTS was uh, the drops of classified and obtaining classified items uh, with global events and with the caches and all of that. So we, we did say that with the implementation we did in PTS 3, uh, we tried to in some of the Reddit threads and all that, that this was not the final version, but we were going to keep looking at it because we've seen directly that people were still not happy with that. Uh, so Keith, do you want to talk a bit about, about that, where we are at now and where we want to go moving forward? Sure. So, you know, the PTS3 version was 
really focused around kind of limiting the loot that was inside the superior caches. Um, prior version had had high ends and, and a really large loot pool. Um, so we targeted in on things we thought players would want more, uh, namely a higher drop chance at receiving exotics, because a lot of players out there don't still have some of the exotics they've been grinding for, and uh, upping the uh, percentage chance of, of getting the classifieds a little bit. Um, so it felt like a baby step to where we actually need to end up. So none of us were uh, sold on that being the, the final thing, and you know the community definitely is echoing that, which is good. Um, so what our plan is now is to go back into those loot tables. We like the general makeup of them, but we're going to up the drop rate of classifieds inside those loot tables, and we're going to increase the number of items that come out of those uh, caches. So now you'll be guaranteed uh, two items to drop, and there's a chance for a bonus drop. So it's you know just that change alone right off the bat uh, makes this a much more rewarding experience, cuts the grind time down uh, considerably, um, because we want it to be fun. We want people to jump in, play all the cool global event stuff, and and feel satisfied. So um, so yeah, so you're. Sorry. So you're saying that's two items guaranteed in a cache plus a chance for a third one. And yes. it's still a chance for either a classified, an exotic, or a normal gear set. But the chances for it to be a classified have been increased. Yeah, we've pushed that the chance that you'll pull a classified item from the loot table is, is over a 50% chance mm -hmm. now. So you know that uh, is up from about 30% on PTS3. Um, so. The base chance is improved. The number of items you get is improved, so you have more uh, chances to pull the item you want. Um, so, you know, so far it starts feeling a lot more rewarding. Quicker for players, they start putting together sets a little bit faster. Um, we still want people to have to get in and, and play for a little bit and experience the content and have that power climb uh, towards the full classified set. It just needs to be a, an attainable goal for most players. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reading. I'm reading chat. I mean, we're we're seeing a bit of a. Some people seem to be happy. Some other people seem to think it's too much. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see the discussion based on that. Uh, a lot of the feedback we had when we uh, when we made the changes with PTS3, uh, we did not give the the chance to get you know any kind of item or like what was uh, the chance. But I think it was about what was it 30 percent to get a classified or something like that. It was about a 30 percent. You have you basically have like a 10 percent chance of each of the classified yeah. sets. Yeah. So combine 30% to pull yeah. any classified. Yeah. And so now we are over 50%, all of them combined. So I mean, no, yeah. not now, but that's what we're working on. Uh, exactly. So yeah. They, they kind of switched places with the normal gear sets, right? Like the normal gear sets are still in there. Um, you might still pull one of those, but the ratio has been swapped. So it's a little bit more preferable to classifieds. Exotics are kind of staying where they were, yeah. um, and the gear sets got brought down a little bit. OK. So, yep. so, that's, for the, so that's for the caches. And in terms of obtaining the, these caches, um, how are you looking at that? Are you doing anything there? Yeah, so we changed the price of the caches on PTS3. They, they, they increased in price, and I know that frustrated a lot of people. Um, so what we've, what we've done is, that price, you know, we like the 1500 price. It's a, it's a good number for you to, to climb towards. Um, but now we've gone through and we're trying to kind of rebalance the token gain um, so that on average, and some people will do this faster. We know that people will find faster routes to do some of this. Um, but on average, people playing challenging level content should be obtaining a cash about every hour. So you can think, you know, every hour I play the game at a difficulty level that most of our players are, have no problem with. Um, They'll be getting, you know, two to three items. Yeah, and so there's a good chance of this to be classified, but not guaranteed. So there is still a chance exactly. to get something else. Yep. All right. Uh, uh, okay. I'm trying to look at my notes and if there was something else. There was something else we talked about before this state of the game. Uh, well, we're also uh, we're also looking at the leaderboards. We talked about that. Oh yeah, that's before that's this. the one <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. Um, the one final piece of this is, you know, the leaderboards are, are a part of the global event. It keeps track of how many tokens you've gained over a period of time and push, puts, you on the, puts you on the leaderboard. Um, and we've still been kind of working on, well, what the reward is going to be. And there's still going to be the vanity and, and stuff that was on there. But now we've created um, special classified caches uh, for each event. So there's an outbreak classified cache and an assault classified cache. By placing on the leaderboards, um, which is, are pretty generous. You know, if you're in there and playing, you'll 
get some rank is our is our hope. Yeah. Um, you will end the event with guaranteed chances at classified drops. So, you know, if you got like five of your six pieces and you played quite a bit, at the end you'll get a few more chances um, at a very very targeted loot table. Just uh, you know, 18 items in it. Okay. Yep. So yeah, this is guaranteed classified in these ones, right? Guaranteed 100% classified. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Um, OK, so just one thing, just to be very clear with that. Uh, so the changes we are talking about right now, they are being working on now. Keith was actually in a call just before this, uh, <laughs> this state of the game to talk about it. So this is not something that's going to be implemented on the PTS3 that comes out on console next week. Uh, that's something that we're looking at that may only be implemented when we release the updates altogether. You know? Uh, we don't know yet if there's going to be a next phase of PTS or not, or if we're just going to stop it there and then just you know, finalize the update with all the latest changes and, uh, and release it. So don't expect these changes for PTS 3, but uh, yeah, still, this is what's being worked on. This is, uh, this is the goal here, to basically try to be a bit more generous with, uh, with the classified drops, right? Absolutely. And you know, that's why there's those caches with all six items in there. We didn't want you to have to grind to test out the new gameplay and balance on the PTS. So you can just grab a set and play with it and test it in the global event content and give feedback on all that stuff. And it's super useful. Um, and we'll keep making it, you know, dialing in the economy uh, up until we ship. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's always a lot of uh, final tweaks. I know that some people were asking, like, if we were. Uh, for asking for us to put, you know, the final build on the PTS. Uh, but there is, you know, it's like if it's the final build and we put it on the PTS, we're going to want to make changes afterwards based on the feedback we'll get on this final <laughs> build. So it's like in the end, it's never final, you know. So uh, the final, I mean, the last build that we have right now, PTS 3, uh, as I said, this might be the final one on the PTS. We don't really know yet. Uh, but it's also going to depend on the reception on console next week. Um, <laughs> And, and then we'll be looking at, at you know, finalizing all of that and putting that uh, for the update and preparing the update for release. So all the changes we are talking about now uh, to classified drops and all these kind of things uh, are things that may not be implemented until uh, the, update, the update comes out. Uh, why doesn't recalibration work on console? The recalibration is, uh, we're, you're still on PTS2 on console, so you don't have the recalibration fix. But it works on PTS3. So next week on Tuesday, when we release it on console, the recalibration should be fixed. Right, Keith? Yes, it is, <laughs> it is fixed on PC right now. It will be on console. It turns out that doing recalibration on classifieds and doing two-piece recalibration and all that was it's a difficult task, more difficult than we initially thought. So we're just <laughs> happy that it's working right now on PC yeah. and that uh, that's great. So <laughs> yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work on console as well. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, OK, do you want to talk about the, the sets themselves, actually? Because there are some changes in PTS3. I don't know if all the console players are familiar with them, because they were on the patch notes. The, con the PC players got to play with them a bit. Uh, the most notable ones are probably with Striker first. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so you know, Striker had its tuning change on PTS2 that kind of brought down the overall amount of heal that you could do with it. Um, and we were. Overall, it took it down to 15% of your overall health. So we're pretty happy with how that plays in the overall balance of the game. Um, but you, we, we weren't super happy with how you got so much of the heal off just equipping the six piece. So you could basically equip the heal, uh, equip the six piece, get a pretty decent heal right off the bat, still go straight firearms. And you know, even though the overall set kind of felt imbalanced, that build definitely pushed pushed out and, and we saw some problems with that and we also didn't really like that it didn't make you commit to a play style right like a lot of these goals of the classified sets are to to make you go all in on the type of build you want to create um, so what we've done is reduce the heal you get just by equipping the six piece and kind of strengthened the amount of heal you get by stacking uh, stamina so now you can actually if you go straight 10k stamina you can actually push the heal slightly further, up to 16%. So you get a slightly better heal than what's on PTS2. But you're making a pretty hard choice to sacrifice DPS and electronics. Um, so you know, we're definitely um, pretty happy with how that's playing so far on PC. So yeah, console players give feedback on that. That'd be great. Yeah. 
especially with the you know the combo striker and shotgun on console being such a such a meta it's going to be interesting to see with the ssg changes plus these changes right. to the striker to see what uh, what kind of impact this can have absolutely uh and then the other set that we kind of uh i would say we tweaked the most on pts3 was uh, lone star so Lone Star was one of those ones that internally we were like most excited about, mm -hmm. but we didn't quite nail the execution of uh, as it first went on the PTS. Um, and there were a bunch of reasons for that. The buff wasn't proccing as often as we thought it would because of some bugs. The percentage of the buff proccing was really low, and there was no way to chain the buffs together. Um, so that one got a pretty big overhaul. It has new signs and feedback to try to help you know that your buff is coming earlier, and when a buff is active is kind of uh, pumped up a little bit with icons above your head and that type of thing. Um, and we've also upped the chance it can buff to 50%, and now you can chain up to four of them together. So if you kind of are getting good rolls and you're in the middle of a fight and you play properly, you have this chance to, you know, go actually berserk, which is what the talent, yeah. you know, was supposed to be all about. So when you say you can uh, like chain up to four times, it's because there is a, like a diminishing return, right, of the chance? Right. Yeah, the, we, we basically built it knowing that that would be the thing that we'd have to kind of keep fine-tuning potentially if it got yep. too powerful. So there's a diminishing returns curve on the back. And right now, after you've hit your fourth one, your, your initial and then three successive, it's impossible to get another one. And we can keep kind of fine-tuning that yep. number if that is deemed too powerful. Yeah. And um, and you were telling me also that there's like you've been doing a bit of a work on actually signs and feedback, you know, overall on some of our gear sets as well. Our yeah, that's you know now that we feel like after PTS three um, and you know we'll see what the console players say. We feel like most of the sets are, excuse me, where they need to be. Um, now is the time we're really focusing on improving the signs and feedback of all the sets because you know the six pieces have all these new talents that are coming in that add a lot of special utility to players. And you kind of need to know what your group has procced in PvE, and you really want to know what people have procced when they're coming against you in PvP. So we're trying to basically make it so that at any time that someone has one of these six pieces active, you know it. So if someone's landed the Deadeye buff, you see the Deadeye icon mm -hmm. you know, next to their nameplate, and for friendlies and enemies. Uh, for strikers, when you have the, the green heal aura around yourself, you see that on enemies now, too. Um, and it's kind of just like that across the board. So we're just trying to make it as obvious and in your face as possible exactly how to counter and how this should change your play style. All right. Uh, and that, those will be probably um, you know, similar to the economy changes. Those probably will go so late, live at the end. Yeah. So those will not be in the console PTS. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I'm trying to read chat and see if there is any, uh, any question we want to we want to take from there. You love the Lone Star and you're excited about it. Um, there's a question about uh, global events, uh, tokens, and the cap. Are we touching that? We are touching that. Um, so we're, we're increasing the cap um, for a couple reasons. Um, the main one is we want you to be able to have prolonged gameplay sessions. Right now, you can hit that cap in the middle of you know, your nightly session and kind of have to break out of your flow and go spend your tokens, or you feel like maybe you want to go spend your tokens before you play your next mission. We want to let you collect for your nightly play session or your daily play session. So it's uh, right now, we're looking at taking it up to 10,000. Uh, that's the number that we're, we're playing with right now. So it'll probably end somewhere around there, yep. up from 5,500, I think. That's good. That should be. Yeah, I'm reading the comments, but yeah, that should be that should be pretty good news. Uh, somebody was asking, so that means you're not aiming for PTS4. Uh, oh, I'm guessing you're not aiming at PTS4. Um, right now, right now, uh, to be honest with you, no, we are not. Right now, we think we are thinking of PTS3 being the last one and doing the final tweaks for the release. But that also is going to depend on what feedback we get from the console players when we release it on Tuesday. So if we see that something is you know, really broken and that we really need to put uh, that much work and something on a PTS again, then we would do a PTS4. But right now, I mean, except like the changes that we've talked about uh, now, uh, right now we're 
pretty happy with where the update is. So we, you know, we have a pretty good idea of what are the final changes we need to do. So we'd rather just like focus on making the final build. Uh, do credits carry over to the next event? Oh, they do. The, oh, the tokens, yeah. Yep. Anything, anything you end with, you can. Uh, the vendor stays active. You can go back in there th between events and, and spend the rest of your tokens. Or if you have everything you want, if you were, if you were really lucky, if you were good, uh, you can carry them over to the next event. We don't want to penalize penalize you for playing. Yeah. That, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, we don't have armor of this buff stamina. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of questions or a lot of requests about buffing stamina. This is not a 1.7 thing. We are not touching stamina uh, for this update. This could be something we want to look at in the future, but this, there is no change to, stam to stamina with this update, just to be very clear. Uh, all right. OK, but so very quick recap on uh, what we've said here, because I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, so what we said, so PTS3 is on PC right now. It's coming to console next week on Tuesday, or at least so far we're aiming for Tuesday, unless something goes terribly wrong with, uh, with submission. But it's looking pretty good. So Tuesday, PTS3 deployed on console. It's going to be the same build as what is available on PC, except for one extra change that will come to PC, to PC later on and that we are going to test on console, which is to the SASG. We're going to change the SASG a bit to try to address the issue with, uh, with that weapon in particular on console. Uh, and more details will be, uh, will be put on the, you know, on the forums, and we probably have a small patch note for the console to explain a bit more what the changes are. Uh, for the invites to uh, the PTS, so as we said, uh, there are two extra criteria to take into account. You need to be 18, and you need to have been, when we made the selection, or when we made the dump of all the profiles, you need to have had uh, the option to receive Ubisoft emails uh, actually ticked in or ticked. So if you didn't have that, that is potentially a reason why you didn't get an invite. Uh, it's too late to change that. But for all the people that had this option uh, activated and still didn't get an invite, please do contact our support teams and they should be able to help you. Uh, and then regarding what is going on on the PTS right now, so we are looking at the drops of the classified, uh, of the classified gear sets and especially of the you know, caches and or like how you acquire classified through the caches uh, with, you know, uh, changes that we're going to be looking at that are aiming at making it more generous, more generous when you get caches, but also uh, more generous in the way you can acquire classified by putting more in the leaderboards as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, these changes will not be put on PTS3. They might only be implemented when the update comes out, which would be after PTS3, but more on that next week probably. And that's what I had in here. Keith, do you have any very clever final word? Oh man, I wish I had a really clever final word. No, I'm just, you know, we're still just doing the last final tweaks and I'm ready to get this out for real to everybody. And yeah, I'm really happy with all the feedback we've got on classifieds and, and the global events. It's yeah. been a good PTS. Yeah. Cool. And console players, so on Tuesday for PTS free, please go out there and for once, and that's probably going to be the only time we're going to say that, but for once, <laughs> please do try SSG and Striker <laughs> and tell us how that just feels. <laughs> And then once you try it for a while, play some other builds. Yeah, too. try something <laughs> else also eventually. Try other builds. Uh, but yeah, please go out there, give us all the feedback you can. And PC players who already have uh, this build available, please also give us as much feedback as you can. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you, Keith. Thank you for taking thank the you time. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, guys. And I'll be seeing you next Thursday. And hopefully by then, Hamish will actually be available here and not there because Hi. he's there it's like i wish i had a camera and i could turn it and people